Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to another fucking Wi-Fi battle with George Rule, of course, the Skyrender. And today we're going up against Hannah Panna in, of course, a UU battle. And this battle was very, very interesting through and through. Uh, I designed a team that is hyper offensive, like really, really offensive. Uh, pretty much to train myself to play more aggressively, to be able to deal with stall much better. Now the thing is here, um, the game idea was, like I said, to break through early, but Hannah is one of those players that play like that herself. So I know that while that's my game idea, that she will bring just about the same type of challenge against me, and I know that that through and through is going to become a very, very interesting game. As of this battle, if anything. So, my team is Choice Bandit, Darmanitan, Mega Sharpedo, uh, Suza Lead Azel, um, Hexorus, uh, Tornadus, and uh, Nasty Plod Lucario. My opponents bring in uh, Rotom, Crobat, Hoopa, Mammoth Swine, um, Chess, Nord, and Empoleon. Now, looking to our team, there was not a whole lot that would actually void off my uh, Darmanitan. Uh, outside, actually, of Crobat, but didn't think she would leave with that, considered the rest of my team, and of course, me packing Azel. And uh, I really didn't want to start off with a self rock Azel anyway, because I know that that would just be a dead giveaway for my team, so I was gonna avoid that, and basically, I was gonna try to hurt something early on, and through that, actually get some kind of momentum. Um, also, Tornadoes is a Tailwind setter, therefore I have no Scar from this team. Uh, and Starpedo is definitely only a late game sweeper. So, with all this, my guys, let's go. So, I'm fairly lucky in the beginning because she will actually start with Empoleon. Now, Empoleon is not gonna do a whole lot against my Yum Yum, <laughs> the Darmanitan. And I'm basically gonna lock myself in, and she's gonna switch out. I did predict the Rotom, but really now, if this is not a defensive Rotom, that, that's pretty much gonna kill it. And I actually get a low roll here. Because it does live on a slither of health, and I am in no position of really switching out. Uh, I was hoping that she wasn't Scarf, sadly she was. Uh, and Thunderbolt, of course, is pretty darn close to taking me out. Now, the thing is, Empoleon is probably the only Pokemon that she could bring that actually has rocks. So, I can actually preserve Jum Jum if I so desire. And I probably, like I said, should have played around that much better and actually brought Taxers. I did not do that, and that actually damaged my Jum Jum a lot. So anyway, Crobat's gonna come in here, and Crobat is... Um, I'll say this, it does uh, threaten my team to some extent, but at the same time, I get a very, very good opportunity to set up Tailwind, because I know a Brave Bird, on long, as long as it isn't Bandit, can't take out my Pokémon. And of course, she's gonna show me that she's somewhat defensive with Black Sludge, and that's okay, like I said, just gonna go for that Tailwind. We need the speed, we need to kinda break through early on. She's going off another Ray Bird, of course, killing my um, poor, poor Tornadoes. But like I said, this team is super offensive, and it's supposed to have sack plays to find momentum. And what do you know? What Pokemon could be better but the Jum Jum coming back in now faster than the Crobats? And that, of course, is going to be very, very, very important. So we're just going to go for the damage. Sadly, she will switch out and sack something else, and she's actually sacking Hoopa. But at the same time, I have no... Pokemon that is particularly weak to Stealth Rocks anymore, and that's good. That is actually really good. So that's Hoopa out of the way. Now, Hoopa is not necessarily a um, dangerous Pokemon for me, but having that out of the way is, of course, important. Uh, had I gone for a U turn, I might have actually been better off. Now, that would not have killed it either, but you know, I would not have lost Jump Jump that early. So I'm going to bring Ashbringer, which is a Hexverse, which has been in contact with the, <laughs> the rest of the team, has been underperforming a bit. Now, it is under, of course, the, the monstrous move that is Tailwind, which means I can just keep going. Now, she's gonna bring Spikes, and I predict the hood switch out, so Dragon Dance was my safer bet, really. Capitalizing, of course, on the Dragon Dance, uh, or the Tailwind. But at the same time here, I have one more turn of, um, what do you call it, of Tailwind, so I'm just gonna have a Poison Jab, and it's not enough, it's not even close, honestly. We do score a Poison, which is nice. But, uh, yeah, we're not doing a whole lot here. And she's going to go for Leech Seed, pretty much, you know, just getting some, um, well, Leech on me. And here is where I start to, um, like, I was predicting her to go for a Spiky Shield. And that was actually dangerous, because there was no ramification for me of just keep going for Poison Jab, since she's in that kind of environment. But I decided, like I said, that she would probably go for a Spiky Shield, so I decided to go for another Dragon Dance. And that or prediction did cost me a bit here, 
because not only will she go for Dream Punch, uh, which of course is forcing me down a bit, but also she's getting enough HP where she could actually start to become a bit dangerous and not necessarily fall. Now I am forced this time to go for Poison Jab, and um, what do you know, she actually packs the Spiky Shield, which... Ooh, 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 ooh. We went from a situation where I could pretty much win this battle from the get-go to um, a very, very nasty situation because I'm actually dying of Leech and that sucks. Uh, or I don't die by Leech but I'm dying by the stall out itself. Now she'll go for another spiky shield and I think that's a great play to make because if she pulls that off then I'm gonna fall. But luckily um, the game is not hating me that much this time and we're gonna go straight on for the outrage and take out the chest node. And, um, that worked. That actually worked. Uh, I obviously, had I kept going for Poison Jab there, we would have had a very, very nasty sweep on our hand. But that is not what happened. Chestnut performed excellently and Hannah performed excellently. So anyway, we're just going to go to Azul and she's going to go for the Oswald and Polion. And uh, I'm pretty much starting to stress play a bit here because I'm going to go for a Taunt. Because I was predicting that she would probably go for Rocks, considering the team I have left. That didn't, doesn't happen. Uh, she goes directly for a Skull. And she get a crit, and that sucks. And I decided to go for self rocks myself, just getting something out of this, just to hurt Crowbat if anything. And she's gonna finish off the Aesil. So, um, yay me! That was probably not the best round of moves. She gets two crits in a row. Incredible. Uh, but anyway, it's it's not over though. I still have Virgil, which of course is the Lucario, and um, I'm just gonna go for a nasty plot uh, because there is no way she can particularly hurt me. And I can force her out in worst case scenario. Now she's gonna go for a scold. It almost does 50%. And she doesn't, of course, get a burn. And I'm just gonna finish that off with an Aura Sphere. And she could have switched out the Crobat there. She actually could. But I uh, guess she didn't wanna risk that. And the thing is here, she's gonna bring Crobat this time. And I'm actually in an excellent position where I could sack the Cario in and uh, make sure the rock stays. Uh, so I decided to actually do that play anyway because uh, the only Pokemon I got left is Sharpedo and what do you know, Sharpedo obviously can't take two Bravers. You can take one once it Mega Evolves, but um, I'm not in a position where I would rather risk that, so I decided to bring Sharpedo in here and uh, not this time do a misplay, which I did last time, which was Mega Evolve and Protect. Obviously, we Protect first, get the Speed Boost, then Mega Evolve. Oh, that's terrible. I've done that twice, I believe, and that's each time it cost me the game. So anyway, she's gonna roost up. That's an excellent play on her side, really, because now I'm not in range where a crunch will take her out, but I need to get the Mega Evolution going anyway, um, and I couldn't really risk that since um, Sharpedo is my last guy, really, so that's... I can't risk it, I guess I can't. So Crunch is gonna do a very nice chunk of damage with on Defensive Crobat, but, of course, the Brave Bird is gonna come, and it's gonna hurt, and it's gonna hurt badly. Not even joking, that seriously is over 50%. And the last matchup is her Mammoth Swine. And this is gonna get a close one, a really, really nasty close one. Because it's all gonna come down to one thing. And that is, if she's Scarfed, her Earthquake will kill. And if she isn't Scarfed, is that I sure that she's gonna go against me, be enough to hurt me, and I am kind of in the danger area. She's gonna sadly go for the ice shard, showing me that she's, of course, the monster that I was presuming it to be, and with life orb, that should probably be close of killing me. But like I said, it is only close, and we actually live it. Actually, live it kind of, kind of good. Like um, I do forget that Sharpedo is, with all sense and purposes, actually. Not bulky, but definitely not as brittle as its form before it. So luckily here we do take this battle, and we're gonna go for a nice, nice waterfall, finish off this game. And I must say, I was really, really, really excited. I'm so glad I pulled this off, but at the same time I won't deny that Hannah played a very, very mighty game. And me screwing up against um, Chestnut actually made this game much closer than I thought it ever would be. And by default... The, the result speaks for itself, so um, it's a 1-0 in my favor, and this is how most battles have been with this team. Uh, Sharpedo is an excellent late game sweeper, uh, but the Tailwind with, of course, the Darmanitan Lucario, that combo really, really brings down the potential walls of the team, and Sharpedo usually can just come in and finish the game off. 
Uh, a lot of sack plays in this team, but people are actually uh, missing out that I'm not trying to, um, to have any Pokemon survive. I don't. Every Pokemon should live or die. I mean, <laughs> and Sharpedo should be the only one standing. So yeah, not a whole lot of afterthoughts about this game, and that's actually for the very reason of I got to explain that through the, through the last part, but honestly, the design of this team is actually fairly, fairly um, obvious. Like, it should almost do a, a real thing here. And it works semi-well in UU. I'm actually kind of proud that this kind of function will down teams. Now, I do recognize that a bulkier team with um, uh, the move Pokemon like Cresselia can avoid this team fairly well off. But as long as their mana ten is healthy, there is just no coming back from that. And Jum Jum is definitely a monster to be reckoned with. And with Choice Man and Tailwind behind it, you just might say your prayers because this guy actually pulls all the subs and I love this guy for it. It's so goddamn dangerous and it's surprising how good this guy really do. And I used Tormentum before in X Y but never in Oras or since a new meta had started. So I'm very glad to see this Pokemon is as dangerous as it always has been. So anyway guys, I want to thank you for watching and uh, write a small update I guess I should say. Uh, there won't be any stream on Saturday due to me being away and celebrate my 4th year anniversary with my fiance. So uh, a lot of showdown sessions is going to be up during that time. So anyway guys, thank you for watching and remember, sky's limit. And I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, take care. Bye.